Coca-Cola stock, ticker symbol KO. Is this still a great dividend stock? And how about the future growth? KO stock is down 8% year to date, which isn't that much compared to the overall market. The S&P 500 is down 24% year to date, so that's quite interesting. In this video I'm going to show you real quickly what Coca-Cola does, the historical returns, the fundamental analysis, dividends, some competitors, and in the last part I'm giving you my price target to see if they are a buy or not. And I think you definitely want to see that part, so make sure to watch until the end. And I'm also very excited to see what you guys think about this stock, so please let me know your thoughts in the comments. My name is Thomas, and this is Thomas Invest. I'm an investor looking for great stocks at great prices. So, what does Coca-Cola do? Coca-Cola is the largest non-alcoholic beverage entity in the world, owning and marketing some of the leading carbonated beverage brands, such as Coke, Fenda and Sprite as well as non-sparkling brands such as Minute Maid, Georgia Coffee, Costa and Glasso. If we check some key highlights in the latest quarterly report, we see that global unit case volume grew 8%. Net revenue grew 12%. Operating income declined 22%. Operating margin declined 20.7% versus 29.8% prior year. EPS declined 28% to $0.44. So to be honest, this doesn't look that great. Margins are decreasing and so is the EPS. If you zoom in on the revenue growth, we see that most of the growth came from growth in price and mix, and only 4% growth in concentrated sales. Another interesting thing is that cash flow declined 1 billion in total to 4.5 billion. So this worries me a bit. If cash flow starts to decline, dividends might be at risk. Later in the video, we will zoom in on the dividends. In this sheet we see the operating segments and corporate results. Net operating revenue increased 12% as we saw before. North America grew 19% in revenue, but declined 12% in operating income, so this worries me a bit. EMEA grew 8% in revenue and 13% in operating income, so this looks pretty good. Asia Pacific only grew 4% and decreased 2% in operating income, so this doesn't look good. Overall, operating income declined 22%. Income before taxes declined 37%. So this is definitely something to keep your eye on. On the 25th of October, Coca-Cola is going to announce quarterly results for the first quarter. Analyst expects 0.64 EPS and 10.52 billion in revenue. Only one analysis has voted a beat, while 15 analysis voted a miss. I think they are going to beat revenue but are going to miss EPS but we will see what's going to happen there. And now that we know more about Coca-Cola, it's time to check the historical results to see what happened there. I decided to include the S&P 500 as a benchmark, since this is one of the easiest ways to invest. Just buy an S&P 500 ETF and wait. Next to that, I included PepsiCo, Keurig Dr. Pepper and Monster Beverages. On the five year chart, we see that all competitors did beat the S&P 500 while Coca-Cola returned only 40% versus the S&P 500 returning 56%, all including dividends. So you are better off owning the S&P 500 on the 5 year chart versus Coca-Cola. PepsiCo returns 70%, KDP returns 185% and Monster returns 63%. As I just said, all three stocks did beat the S&P 500 on the 5 year chart. On the one year chart we see that Coca-Cola returned 4%, while the S&P 500 returned a minus 16%. PepsiCo and KDP both have a 6% return and Monster Beverages is nearly flat. On the 6 month chart we see a minus 12% return for KO stock, while the S&P 500 returned a minus 18%. PepsiCo returned minus 5%, KDP returned minus 2% and Monster Beverages is the only one with a positive return of 10%. On the one month chart we see a minus 12% return for Coca-Cola, a minus 8% return for the S&P 500, minus 6% return for PepsiCo, a minus 4.8% return for KDP and Monster Beverages is nearly flat. Overall Coca-Cola didn't do a great job in the past 5 years, including dividends, which is something people love about this stock. But could it be that Coca-Cola stock is a buy in current market conditions? Well, let's check the fundamentals of KO stock. But first, if you made it this far into the video, I want to thank you a lot for watching this video. 
Make sure to subscribe and in return you receive similar analysis to this one every week. Let's continue by diving into the fundamentals. Coca-Cola is a 236 billion market cap company which makes them one of the larger beverage companies in the world. PE ratio is at 24, which could indicate that they are overvalued. Later in the video I will show you my 3 price targets that I created for Coca-Cola stock, so make sure to watch until the end. Trailing 12 month revenue is at 41 billion, and in this graph we see that revenue is decreasing over a longer period of time. But it has to be said that since 2021 revenue is growing again. Net income is at 9.5 billion, which gives us a profit margin of 23%, which is above my 10% minimum, and also above the 5 year average. But keep in mind that in the latest quarterly results, profit margin is decreasing, so definitely keep an eye on this number. Return on assets is at 8.9%, which is below my 10% minimum, so I don't like this number. But return on equity is at 41%, and the most important number here, return on invested capital is at 14%, which is very nice especially since it's above the 5 year average of 11%. Another thing that I don't like about Coca-Cola is the fact that debt is really high. Right now debt is at 42 billion, while total cash is at 11.6 billion. I prefer big companies like Coca-Cola having enough cash to pay them at least a third of the total debt. Coca-Cola can pay them around 27% of the total debt, which is not enough to me. So definitely keep an eye on this number. And it's of course very important that free cash flow is growing, since this is used to pay down debt, but also to buy back shares, pay dividends, do acquisitions and research and development. In this graph we see that over a longer period of time free cash flow is growing, but it's not really consistent. It's a good thing that it's growing, but I prefer a bit more steadier and consistent pattern here. Since 2018 Coca-Cola is issuing new shares, which is something that I really don't like. This will cause the EPS to go down. PE ratio to go up eventually, and it will be harder to maintain the dividends since total dividends paid will go up. And in the last part, you as an investor will own less of the company. Next up are the dividends, one of the reasons why people love Coca Cola stock. Dividend yield is at 3.2% and they pay an annual dividend of $1.76 or 0.44 each quarter. Payout ratio is at 70%, which is way too high in my opinion. You want this number below 50%. Right now they only have 30% left in cash to buy back shares, do acquisitions, pay down debts, reinvest in the company. One of the reasons why this payout ratio is so high is because they issue more new shares and free cash flow is decreasing. That's also why the 5 year dividend growth rate is really low at 3.5%, but they increased the dividends for 59 years in a row, which is pretty impressive. Overall I have a mixed feeling. Dividend yield is pretty good at 3.2%, but payout ratio is way too high. Next up are the fundamentals of Coca-Cola versus some major competitors. I decided to include PepsiCo, Keurig Dr Pepper and Monster Beverages. Coca-Cola and PepsiCo are by far the biggest company in terms of market cap. Coca-Cola and KDP seem to have the lowest PE ratio, so they are the winner here. But keep in mind that this PE ratio might still be too high. Monster has the highest revenue growth year over year and also the highest revenue compound annual growth rate. Coca-Cola is at only 1% and of course the lowest here. Net income compound annual growth rate is the highest at KDP and free cash flow compound annual growth rate is the highest at PepsiCo. Coca-Cola has a negative number here. Coca-Cola has the highest gross profit margin and also the highest net income margin. But return on total capital is the highest at Monster Beverages, and Coca-Cola is one of the lowest here. Monster is the only company in this list who can pay down all their debt, so they are the winner here. Other companies seem to have a lot of debt compared to the cash position. Coca-Cola has the highest dividend yield, but also the highest payout ratio. PepsiCo has the highest dividend growth rate, and Coca-Cola has the most consecutive years of dividend increases. PepsiCo is at the second spot here. Overall I think Coca-Cola isn't the best stock in this list when comparing all fundamentals. But does this mean that Coca-Cola is overvalued? Well let's check the 3 price targets that I created using the Everything Money software, which is one of the best tools out there. I'm using a low, mid and high assumption to get the 3 price targets, starting off with revenue growth. I expect things to be between the 5 and 10 year average for the coming years, so I'm filling in 1% for the low assumption. 2.5% for the mid assumption 
and 4% for the high assumption. We also saw that profit margin was decreasing a bit year over year. So I'm filling in 20, 22.5 and 25%. Same story with the free cash flow margin. Right now PE ratio is at 24, but to me this is way too high for a slow growing company who issues new shares. So I'm filling in 15, and it's again the same story with the price to free cash flow. You don't want to overpay for a slow growing company. For my desired annual return I'm filling in 12.5% since I can get an easy 10% average annual return with owning an ETF. Right now Coca-Cola is at $54 a share. I hit analyze and we only see red numbers here. We have a low price target of $20, a mid price target of $25 and a high price target of $32. So this doesn't look good for Coca-Cola and need to fall in half and maybe even more to become a value play. My final conclusion on this stock is that I do like the drinks itself. It's an iconic brand and sometimes it seems that a lot of people are investing in these kinds of companies because of emotions instead of facts and numbers. To me Coca-Cola is overvalued and I don't see the excitement because they issue new shares, have a lot of debt, revenue is growing slowly, margins are decreasing and dividend yield is the only thing right now that is attracting me. But to be honest I think there are better deals out there. So right now I'm skipping Coca-Cola stock, but I will keep evaluating them from time to time. And remember to always do your own research and never fully trust on what I or other YouTubers say about a stock. I'm not a financial advisor and this content is just for entertaining purposes only. I hope you liked this video and I did bring some insights of the company to you. I would really appreciate a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to get notified when I'm posting a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.